We're live at Brockton Community Access uh, for election 2019 here in the City of Champions. Um, I have with me um, Larry Curtis, Steve Foote, and Tom Minicello will be joining us shortly. So um, we're going to get right to the races and run down, um, run down the candidates. Um, we are going to look at who's in the races. We have mayor's race, council at large race, and then going down the ballot, there's city council in Ward 1, school committee in Ward 2, both councilor in Ward 3 and school committee in Ward 3. Ward 4, both of the offices are uncontested. There are candidates, we'll explain that later. In Ward 5, there's a city council race, school committee is unopposed. Ward 6 is city council race and school committee is unopposed. Ward 7, city council race and school committee is unopposed. So what I would like to do first is if we could take a look at the races and we can put up on the screen um, the fact that we have um, different candidates running for uh, the offices. We'll take a look at the pictures. So in the mayor's race, we have uh, two new candidates, both running for mayor. Uh, Jimmy Pereira ran the last time. He's running a second time. Robert Sullivan, the city council president, is the other candidate for mayor. Uh, we'll flip over to the next race, which are the councillors at large. Um, we have two incumbent councillors that have served already. We have uh, Winter Farwell, former mayor, former school committee member, Moses Rodriguez, uh, who had been the city council president until the untimely death of Mayor Bill Carpenter. He's now the interim mayor, but not a candidate for mayor. He's running at large. Uh, Ward 5 city councillor Ann Beauregard is trying to move up to be a councillor at large citywide. Um, and then we have newer candidates. We have Kevin Borges, uh, who works at the health department. Tina Cardoso, who ran a campaign last time in Ward 3 for city council. Gary Keith, who's on his fourth try for uh, councillor at large. Uh, Rita Mendes, who's a new candidate. And Adias Pierre, who had run for uh, council before in that race. Let's go to Ward 1 council. I'm going to kick it over to Steve. Oh, we got longtime Ward 1 Councilor Tim Cruz running for re-election, and um, Steve Lanis, uh, who runs a uh, dry cleaning business on Pleasant, uh, not Pleasant Street, uh, Legion Parkway, I believe. Uh, it's challenging. Uh, Ward 1 School Committee, Tom Minicello, uh, running unopposed, and he's going to join us in a minute. And uh, that would be uh, Ward 2 City Councilor Tom Monahan, a Brockton High School class of 1974 graduate, along with myself. Uh, running unopposed in, I believe he's unopposed, in Ward 2. Mm -hmm. uh, ward 2 School Committee. Tony Donegan, who was a former school committee member in another ward, against uh, Cynthia Rivas Mendez. Uh, ward 3 City Councilor, longtime city councilor and former school committee mm -hmm. member as well, Dennis Ianeri, against uh, Marlon Green. I think this is Marlon's second time around going with the seat with, with Dennis. Uh, and uh, Ward 3 School Committee, Mark D'Agostino, the current school committee member, against uh, longtime Republican uh, Alan Green. And we got Ward 4 City Councilor running uncontested, uh, uh, incumbent Susan DeCastro. And also uh, running in Ward 4 for our school committee, Tony Rodriguez, uncontested at this time. In Ward 5, we have two new councillors that are competing for the Ward 5 seat. As we know, incumbent Ann Beauregard chose to run for councillor at large this time around. So we have Cindy Ether Costa against uh, Attorney Jeffrey Thompson. Uh, two new uh, candidates there in Ward 5 School Committee, uh, Judy Sullivan. We have in Ward 6 City Council, incumbent John F. Lally versus Julio C. Pomar. Uh, ward 6 is always an interesting race. We also have Ward 6 School Committee. Uh, my colleague Joyce Azak, who's running unopposed. Mm -hmm. Ward 7 is uh, City Council, the incumbent Joyce Azak's sister, Shirley Rita Azak, running against Michael J. Noons. And there's another one of my colleagues 
running unopposed, uh, Timothy Sullivan for Ward 7 School Committee. So those are the races that we have for um, all of the candidates that are running citywide, whether they're unopposed or opposed, a whole bunch of races. I think there are 24 people that are actually contested and the other ones are uncontested. And unless, of course, somebody decides they're going to write in somebody and you never know what that's going to be like. Um, we also got out earlier, we got some numbers um, in the turnout. Um, in the election, and I'm not sure if we have that uh, in, in graphic form, but um, we have turnout for the citywide numbers um, as of 6 o'clock. So I'm gonna, we'll start running them down. Uh, it will take a couple of turns. Uh, the numbers are from 6 o'clock. So um, in, over in Ward 1, uh, Tom's Ward, where he's on the school committee and where I formerly lived, um, the, the turnout in Ward 1, the numbers are up there for each one of the precincts. There are four precincts in each ward. Uh, the total in Ward 1 was 2,351 in all of those four precincts. Ward 2, um, which is uh, Tom Monahan's ward, a new candidate, uh, Lisa Plant moved out of Brockton, so there are two candidates running for school committee. That has only about 1,551. Uh, that turned out as of six o'clock. Um, Ward three, which is uh, South Junior High, Kennedy Elementary School, West Side Library, uh, 2,401 votes. That's the Dennis Ianeri, Marlon Green um, City Council race. And school committee is Mark D'Agostino and Alan Green. Steve, why don't you take four? Okay, over in Ward four, we're looking at um, uh, a a, B, C, D, it seems to be uh, a uh, normal turnout there, a little higher than usual, but uh, 2,048 uh, people have voted in four. Uh, over in Ward 5, we have uh, the Fighting Fifth, and as they like to be called, and it's 2,087 people have voted there. Uh, looks like a pretty strong turnout at the East Side Library of 440, that would be 5A. Um, so that's pretty good. And uh, over in our ward, uh, Larry? Uh, uh, over in Ward 6, uh, in our ward, we always have great turnout over <coughs> in our Ward 6. We're seeing as of 6 o'clock this evening at 2,060 voters combined turned out at both the uh, Brookfield and Asheville School. I know I voted at uh, about 6.15 this evening. And uh, the number here at 6 o'clock was 6.27. It was up to like 6.48 when I voted. Uh, and. Uh, when you look at Ward 7, you know, you're seeing another high turnout out there of about 1,843 voters over in Ward 7. That comprises of North Junior High, the High Rises, the Bel Air High Rise, Sullivan Tower, and the Raymond Elementary School. And the total citywide at 6 o'clock was 14,341 voters or 26.7%. Now, earlier in talking to uh, Election Commissioner Cindy Scrivani, used to know her as Sydney Hogan, okay, she was talking about a 30% turnout overall for citywide as of, you know, the whole election. Um, could be that, could be more, this was 6 o'clock, so the, 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 you know, people vote after work. They all go exactly. after work, and that's the rush, and it had stopped raining, so, mm -hmm. yep. you know, um, She's usually on the money, John McGarry used to be on the money in terms of voter turnout. Um, I keep hoping it's going to be higher. You never know. Well, it's good to see involvement in the city, and definitely what you said is true. Many people come home, you know, after 6 o'clock, between 6 and, and 8. I just drove by the Hancock School, and I saw a number. All the people have uh, packed it in with regard to signs. It's pretty dark at the end of the, end of the uh, uh, parking lot, but uh, with regard to the parking lot itself, there were a number of cars in there, and, you know, the commute home from Boston or wherever people are coming from. Definitely and think, a rush. And I think what we're seeing here today is we're seeing a generally a slightly higher voter turnout for a mayoral election. Let's keep in mind we don't have a statewide election this year or a presidential election. So, I mean, the 14 to 14 to 15,000 has been the traditional average of voters that would come out in a mayoral race when we look back over the last three terms of Mayor Carpenter's um, you know, tenure. So 26% at 6 o'clock. 30% is not unrealistic, and it's probably a good turnout given the fact that we had some bad weather in the early part of the day. And also, I think what help, helps a lot, Mark, too, is that we don't have the school open today. So people can get, especially in the Brookfield School, which has three precincts, 
You have to walk about 100 yards with, if the school is open. You have to walk about 100 yards to the back gym there to vote, which is a terrible thing. It should be changed immediately. I don't know why they don't change it. But at least with the kids not in school, they move the, the voting place to the cafeteria, which is in the front of the building, and then the senior citizens can come out and vote a lot easier. It just makes it easier for everybody, thus a larger turnout. So we have some video from earlier in the day. I, I went out, uh, we got a little creative today. We were inside cars, inside people's homes, here at BCA, and we went over to the two candidate headquarters for mayor. So I'd like to take a look, if we could, at the mayor's video, uh, the two candidates uh, running for the mayor's office uh, here in the City of Champions. Let's uh, see if we can take a look at that right now. Election Day 2019, Jimmy, we're here at your headquarters, and I'm sure you've been out. It's uh, yes. about 2 o'clock right now. How are you right, feeling? Right. Feeling great, feeling great. I uh, haven't really uh, slept any uh, since probably about 3 in the morning or whatnot, but we're used to it. We want to make sure we uh, execute uh, and uh, feel the energy, feel the energy. So full operation over here, yes. people making phone calls out in the rain, knocking on doors. Um, what have you he heard and what do you want to tell the citizens of Brockton? Um, I've uh, heard a lot of people asking about signs and when I, what I want to tell to the uh, citizens of Brockton is signs don't vote, people do. And, and what I need is people to get up, get out and vote. That's the most important thing you can do. Uh, we want to make sure that we continuously contact our voters and our support base, but also encourage everyone to get out and vote. Uh, we're expected to get a high voter turnout. Uh, and this is what it's all about, to making sure that you participate, uh, do your uh, civic duty, uh, because people have died for this right. And we want to make sure that we uh, uh, focus on uh, encouraging everyone to uh, participate and uh, this is what makes this country great. Everyone has the freedom of will uh, and freedom to uh, choose who they want as a candidate to help move the city forward. So if you're elected on election day, day one, I mean when you get sworn in I should say in January, what would be your first top priority and, and, and how would you hit the ground running? Uh, for me my first top priority would be to bring the city together. I'd like to make sure that all communication uh, off uh, assets are open, that uh, people are able to engage uh, with not just the mayor's office but everyone um, from top to bottom, bottom to top uh, because we need to make sure we have everyone at the table, that everyone feels included and everyone knows what is expected as being a Brocktonian. Uh, we want to make sure that you're following all the codes and regulations uh, but we want to make sure that we're receiving your feedback and not just waiting for you to come to us, the government, but the government to go to you, the people of Brockton. As a public servant, that's what I've done for the regional planning agency and if elected, uh, that's what I'll be doing for the uh, city of Brockton as well as mayor. So, Jimmy, um, you get the final word. What do you want to say to the residents, the voters of Brockton after this election? Most certainly, I want to say thank you, everyone, for getting out and participating. This is what makes Brockton stronger, so please continue to get involved. No matter what happens, we are going to make Brockton stronger. We're going to unite the city of Brockton because that's what we're supposed to do as a public servants. And again, thank you for getting out there and voting. And again, make sure let's make move city, the city of Brockton forward. Okay. Bob, uh, Election Day 2019, we're here at your headquarters right now. It's about 1.15. How are you feeling? What are you hearing out from the field? Yeah, I mean, it's been a really, really good day. Um, you know, very positive. Uh, as you know, our campaign, my has been issues driven, been professional, been courteous, um, working for everybody to better Brockton. Uh, I'm very proud of the campaign that myself and my supporters have uh, have run over the past few months, but I'm excited. This, is, this election is about the future of Brockton, and uh, I'm just really, really happy happy that people are turning out to vote today. Now, you've talked throughout the campaign about experience. You've been a city council for four, 14 years, council president four times. Do you think that the voters got that message during the debates and when you were out knocking on doors? Without question. I mean, when I was knocking on doors, that's what people would say. They would say experience matters, uh, leadership matters. And, and I think that that rings true. Uh, during the debates, it was illustrated that I have the experience that my opponent may not have. Uh, but at the end of the day, we, meaning everybody running for office, win or lose, needs to come together as a unified group to better our community that we call home. I'm just proud that people are engaged about this election. Uh, I think we're going to have significant turnout today citywide, all seven wards, all 28 precincts, and um, the, the future in bright Brockton is very, very bright, Mark. First thing you're going to do if you get elected, I know you haven't got elected yet and we're early in the day, but what are your priorities to be mayor of the city of Brockton? Well, if I am fortunate enough and the voters, uh, you know, bestow upon me the honor of serving as the mayor, 
The first thing I've said this many, many times is to have a community engagement meeting. We, meaning Brockton residents, people that live here, raising their family here, we have to come together. We have to be a voice together. It's a winning team. Uh, Brockton needs to do better. And if I am fortunate enough to be the mayor, I'm going to be uh, the CEO of a business known as Brockton. And I'm going to work with all the local, state, and federal officials. Um, and, and most importantly, Mark, and you know this, you're a public servant, it's to try to be the voice of the people at City Hall and throughout the city. And that's what I would hope to do, but it's a long day. Uh, the votes are still coming in. Um, but win or lose, uh, I'm very, very proud of the support. I'm overwhelmed by the union endorsements and the endorsement of the voters here in the city of Brockton. And what would you like to say directly to those people? Just take the mic and you can talk to the voters. Thanks, Mark. Well, first of all, I just want to thank, ladies and gentlemen, uh, people that live here in the city of Brockton, the city of Champions. Um, this election today on Tuesday, November 5th, polls opened at 7, they close at 8 p.m. It's extremely, extremely vital for the future of Brockton. Uh, you know, I'm here uh, running for mayor. I'm one of you. Born and raised in the city of Brockton, raising our three children here in the city of Brockton. Brockton is home. It's my your home, your home, and our home. We need to make sure that we elect the right people to have a safe home, economic thriving home. And quite honestly, I believe I have the experience and leadership to make Brockton move forward in such a positive manner that's going to benefit everybody that lives and works in the city of Brockton. Thank you for your consideration. And we're back live here in BCA Studios. Uh, we just heard from both candidates for mayor, Jimmy Pereira and Robert Sullivan. And... All we're doing now, it's 8.15, we are waiting to get numbers and results. Okay, so um, gentlemen, you heard what both of the candidates had to say. We got to go to both of the headquarters. They were active, they were in, in full operation. People were making calls, they're out knocking on doors. They were in umbrellas and slickers and everything because it wasn't fun when I got to see them at that point in the day. Uh, anything that strikes a chord that you Well, heard? first I'd like to say um, kudos to everyone out there who was holding signs today. It was a tough day out there um, for everybody with regard to the, uh, the cold and the rain. Um, I was out at one of the polls and one of the, I asked one woman, you know, how long have you been out there? And she said, oh, I started at 7, we took an hour and a half off, and this was at 7 at night, she was still out there. Um, so uh, it, was, it was not a pleasant day for uh, politicking in the city of Brockton, but um, as you said, the numbers look pretty darn, pretty darn good so far. And, um, it really was um, uh, nice of all these people to be supporting their candidates. Um, the message I heard from both candidates is that everyone has good intentions. You know, um, everyone loves the city of Brockton, knows that it, 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 the city of Brockton is a great place to be and that there's a, a good future in the city of Brockton. And I think we can see that in terms of the development. Uh, if you drive around the city, you see the development that's going on, you see the increase in property values and prices and homes and you see investment in the city downtown you see building uh, economic projects the state's involved private industry is involved market rate rents are involved so there's a lot of good things here in in the city of Brockton and, and um, it's uh, a tribute to you know, the people who decided to stay here in Brockton and make this their home um, and it's certainly uh, a tribute to those who want to be involved and make Brockton a better place, and there's lots of and there's lots of good people that want that. Okay. Well, in your in your mayor's race, I mean, you got a clear uh, a clear choice between the two got the two people. I mean, you got the old guard Bob Sullivan, who's been around, lots of experience against the newcomer Jimmy Pereira, even though he did win, he did run the last time around. He's got one uh, one citywide election under his belt. So, I mean, it, the, the, the candidates couldn't be more different. So, you know, you got a very clear choice which way you want to see it go. And uh, uh, so uh, it's not like uh, you have two people running with the same platform, basically. They both have totally different ideas of how they want to govern. So should be interesting to see how it comes out. Larry? Well, I think it's interesting to realize that when you really look at this election today, it was really only a 16-week election because with the passing of Mayor Bill Carpenter, while candidate Pereira was in the race to begin, you know, half about a third of the way into the year, uh, it really wasn't until the passing of Mayor Carpenter and the ultimate, um, you know, services that were done around July 15th that we really realized that we were going to have a, a two candidate race, even though there was a third, of, there were five other ca five candidates for the mayoral primary. It really was coming down to a Pereira Sullivan runoff. You know, anyone that was paying attention to what was going on out there. Uh, you know, I think um, the 
minority community by definition from my point of view is uh, a blend of Haitian, Cape Verdean, African American, Latino, uh, you know, votes. Uh, those voters have been resignated and energized to come out and make a difference here in the city today. We hear so much about, you know, the diversity of our city, but we've always heard that a minority community tends not to come out and vote. Well, when you looked at that primary vote and you, st you split it down the ethnicity lines, it was almost a 50-50 split. So going into this general election today with uh, Bob Sullivan and, and Jimmy Pereira, uh, all bets are off as to how close this race potentially can be. I mean, the, the skeptics are going to tell you it should be Bob Sullivan with, as you mentioned, Steve, a uh, uh, longtime you know, incumbent here in the city of Brockton, 14 years experience in the city council. Uh, it's going to be a close race, I think, in, in, that most people will realize. And don't forget that death of Mayor Carpenter also trickled down into the council at large race because you had Bob Sullivan moving on to run for mayor, opening up a seat, um, and Moses Rodriguez going into the mayor's seat. So he really couldn't campaign like he might have campaigned if he was just running for re-election to the council. So it, it did trickle all the way down. Absolutely. And uh, if you look at the race between the two candidates, it was a very gentlemanly type race. They were very cordial to each other. It wasn't a lot of rock'em sock'em like we've been used to in other campaigns in the past. A uh, little towards the end, the last two debates that happened, they, they got a chance to ask each other questions, and that's when it gets interesting at, at the end of the day. Um, we were able to also go out in the field and talk to a couple of the Councilor at Large candidates, I mean, in between the raindrops. So let's take a look at the, the candidates that we were able to cut, uh, catch up with on the campaign trail for Councilor at Large. We're here at Hancock School with Ann Beauregard, candidate for Councilor at Large. Ann, how's it going today, and what are you thinking? Well, what we're thinking, um, I'm nervous and afraid, and um, but no, everybody, we're thanking the people that are coming out to vote. We're thanking the people that already did. Uh, we're encouraging you, if you haven't, to get out there and vote. And uh, let's remember our veterans that give us uh, this privilege, honor, and um, you know, and uh, how would I say, appreciate those that are serving our nation right now and making sure that we keep our uh, freedom. And uh, thank you for being out there. But most of all, let's get these people that are volunteering on these campaigns and they're out here in this pouring rain and appreciate them a lot too today. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, uh, it's a rainy election day 2019. I'm sure you've been out since 7 o'clock this morning. How are you feeling today? Feeling pretty good. Uh, I'm energetic. Uh, you know, it's a rainy day here today, but, you know, I'm very grateful uh, for my supporters that have come out and helped me today. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I really believe I'm going to pull this out tonight uh, with the... Um, the people that have come out for me, they are, are talking, you know, that there's a lot of good things happening out here. I get a lot of good support. Um, and I just want to thank everyone for taking the time uh, and to come out and cast their vote for their candidate of choice. Um, me, personally, I'm out here. I'm going to be come, I'm going to stay out here until about 8 o'clock tonight. Then I'm going to go to City Hall, and I'm going to go see what the results will be. But I'm feeling pretty good about this. And I'm sure your family's all with you all over the place, Ward uh, 5. You're in Ward 5 at East Middle School. You've got 28 precincts to cover. Um, when you get done at City Hall, you have an open invitation to come by and visit us. If you'd like, on cable, we're going to be live. Um, if you get elected, Kevin, what's the number one thing the first day uh, after you get sworn in? What do you want to do as a counselor at large? What's your big issue? I think it's code enforcement. Code enforcement and a whole different, uh, well, a whole lot of issues I want to deal with, but I want to just kind of like regroup, get myself together. This has been a long uh, road here. These last few weeks have taken a lot out of me. Uh, my family, uh, my wife and kids, in fact, they're on the way over here now to support me. They've been, uh, my wife's been out all day long passing out signs to people uh, in different locations. But I'm going to um, follow through with what I had said on our interview yeah. that we had, I am going to work diligently for all seven wards here in the city of Brockton, and I will represent the residents here in Brockton and make the city better for all of us. Perfect. Made for television. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you very much for your support. And we're going to go over to Ward 1, where there's a contested city council race between incumbent Tim Cruz and Steve Latus over in Ward 1. Let's take a listen. 
Tim, uh, election day 2019, running for re-election as a city councilor. Uh, what have you seen out today in this wonderful world of weather and on the campaign trail when you're out talking to voters? Well, talking to voters has been, as usual, a lot of fun and really satisfying. You get out, you, you get the word, and you hear back from people. It's nice to do it every two years because you get the feedback on what's going on. On today, it's been fairly busy. I don't think it's going to be crazy numbers, but it's been fairly busy until this last hour or so. We're home now trying to dry off. We've been out holding signs in the pouring rain, and it's been it's really coming down right now. But still, voters need to get out there and, and be there and get their vote in. So today, uh, there's going to be an election for a new mayor. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are a couple of councilor-at-large seats open, and then there are challengers to uh, different city councilors. Um, how important do you think experience is being on the council and having different people that are experienced? I think particularly in years like this with the you know untimely passing of, of Bill Carpenter, we'll have a new mayor. He'll probably be a very experienced mayor, but he may not be. I think my experience on the city council is very important right now because there's going to be a lot of changes when there are. But every 10 years or so, you see a lot of new faces. You need some experience on the council at the time to know how the budget runs, how the meetings run, how the city itself is set up and the departments, and I think the experience right now in particular is more important than, than ever. What do you think the big issues are going into 2020 in terms of uh, everybody gets sworn in on January 6th, the first Monday of the month? What, what do you think the council will be dealing with? Well, I think, first of all, we are going to have, uh, we'll probably have dealt with it by the end of the year, but the uh, shortfall on the busing and transportation issues, which we were aware of at the time, the, the mayor unfortunately passed away but he we did know about the uh, the shortfall so it's not really a surprise but uh, we do have to deal with that education funding as always is going to be and the state is finally stepping up and we'll see how that affects our budget going forward on the schools and public safety but more than anything right now is is we got to keep building we got to keep de attracting development to the city we've got to expand that tax base to uh, give taxpayers relief and to get things done like roads and and uh, the infrastructure in the city so um, what do you want to say to the residents of Ward 1 on Election Day? It, this is going on after 8 o'clock. Well, hopefully I'm saying thank you for re-electing me. If I'm not, I'm saying congratulations to Mr. Delanus and good luck. But hopefully when this is on, I'll be thanking the, the voters of Ward 1 for sending me back for another two years. And last but not least, uh, where is the portrait of Paul Stadensky going to be placed over for the next council? Uh, that's a good question. It uh, always followed Councilor Brophy. It's uh, been... Uh, actually kind of set in the same spot for a few years, but we expect to add some. In fact, uh, we finally have portraits of Councillor Farwell, or former Mayor Farwell, Mayor Units and Mayor uh, Harrington and Mayor Belzotti ready to be posted. So hopefully we'll get those up uh, in early January, and we'll have to see where we're going to put all of those to. We'll do an unveiling. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Okay, we're, our, we're in Ward 1 over at West Middle School, and I am here with Steve how do you say your last name? Lanus. Lanus. Okay, Steve. Um, rainy weather day, terrible weather day. What are you seeing so far? You've been out here since 7 o'clock this morning. It seemed a little slow, mm -hmm. um, but people are still coming out, so. Do you think you were able to get your message out during the campaign and let the voters of Ward 1 know uh, what you stand for in uh, running for city council? I think I did okay. Yeah. I think I got, I got out to enough people out there, and uh, I guess we'll wait and see. Okay, so, so if you get elected um, and sworn in on January 6th, 2020, what do you, what's the first thing you want to do as a city council? Well, one thing I want to do is um, work on the homeless situation downtown. Um, I think that's a big problem up there, down there, and we can uh, definitely need to do something for that. Uh, help the downtown businesses while helping the homeless, and that will also... Uh, give new businesses a chance to come downtown. So I see that as a big problem down there. Okay, and you're a downtown business owner, so that right. makes a lot of sense. Um, in terms of Ward 1 specifically, the west side of Brockton, uh, A, B, C, and D, uh, we're, we're at West Middle School right now. Um, what do you see that the voters told you when you went out and knocked doors? Is there any specific issue they are looking for you to address? Uh, nothing really specific that they mentioned, but... Uh, the uh, drug awareness down here, you know, there's needles everywhere. You know, you'll see them at the mall. You'll see them up here, West Middle School. Uh, some of the people I spoke to, coaches um, for uh, soccer teams have to come down here and check the fields before the kids come down and practice for needles. So, 
Okay. And Absolutely. lastly, what do you want to say to uh, the voters or the residents of Ward 1? Keep in mind this is going to air after 8 o'clock when the polls close. Um, I just want to thank everybody that, um, you know, let me into their homes and, you know, giving it my best shot and hopefully it works out well for everybody. Thank you. So, all right. Thanks a lot. Okay. And we're going to take a look at uh, Ward 5. Um, we did go over to Ward 3 and in between the raindrops we could not find the two candidates because um, it was pouring really heavy at that point. So we went over to Ward 5 and there were two candidates running for City Council. Um, Jeff Thompson and uh, Cindy Ethier Koska because Ann Beauregard, the incumbent City Councilor, decided to run for Councilor at Large, so that created a vacancy. Let's take a look and listen to the two candidates for City Council in Ward 5. Cindy, uh, Election Day 2019, uh, wet and rainy out there, so we're improvising today. We're bringing candidates in cars, in BCA studios, in people's houses, wherever we can find them. Uh, you've been out since 7 o'clock this morning. This will air after 8 o'clock when the polls close. How, how's it been going, and what are you thinking? It's been a great day, uh, wet, but you know, with umbrellas, we're keeping dry. My team is out there. We've been holding signs at the four locations in Ward 5. Myself and one of my other campaign team members, we've been giving rides to a lot of voters today to get them to the polls. Mm -hmm. So it's been really good. Uh, any, do you know anything about turnout at this point? We're, we're trying to get some numbers from the elections office. Do you think the rain affected it? Well, you know, earlier in the day, no, but I think, you know, this afternoon there's definitely, you know, it's been a slowdown and, you know, hopefully tonight when people get out of work, they'll still come by because it is so important. Um, but yeah, I mean, the numbers, uh, I know Precinct A, which is the East Side Library, about a half an hour ago, there was 309 votes had been cast at that point. So the others, I'm not sure of okay. yet. A lot of vote, a lot, a lot of votes to be counted. Mayor's race, city council race, council at large race, and uh, in some wards, school committee races. So as you went out and knocked on doors and talked to people, what are the biggest issues, and what might you hit the ground running with if you get elected and get sworn in on January 6th? Well, one of the big things they've complained about is vacant buildings, vacant storefronts, and that's something I've already been working on as not just a candidate, but as a citizen. I've been talking to property developers and owners and business owners and asking why they've um, had these empty vacancies. And another thing, of course, always is talked about is public safety. But when you ask people, you know, what their issues are with public safety, most of them are saying, oh, it's nothing really, but, you know, it's always a concern. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, we have the busing issue that's uh, been brought up in recent days. The quality of life has been a big thing. You know, we need to get these streets cleaned up. You know, we're not a place where we can just be dumped on anymore by other communities. Enough is enough. And you're in the downtown area, so you get to see a little bit of everything. Right. I'm the only candidate running for anything in the city that lives downtown. Okay. So lastly, um, talk to the voters directly, forget about me for the moment, and what do you want to say to them? This is after the polls closed on election day. Okay. For those of you who listened to me, who allowed me to put signs on your yard, and those who voted for me, thank you. That really comes from my heart. I really, truly appreciate it. Um, and if I am elected, I will be here working for all of you as a public servant, and I want to hear what your issues are. Jeff Thompson, candidate for Ward 5 uh, City Council. How are you feeling today, Jeff? Feeling wet, but other than that, I, I feel confident. Um, I, I believe I put in the work uh, for the job. I, I've been walking through the neighborhoods uh, for the last six months. Um, I've, I believe I've made a connection with the, uh, with the residents of Ward 5. I believe they like my plan for the city, and so I, I feel confident. Now, how important do you think it is, I know when you were running, um, Bob Sullivan is leaving the city council. You have a few attorneys running for office, uh, one in Ward 5 and one in Ward uh, in citywide at large. Right. How important it is to have some legal expertise on the council? I think it's extremely important. Uh, I have a, a background in law. I mean, uh, a city councilor is at heart a, a legislator, one who writes the law. And so to have a uh, background in the law, I think is helpful. Uh, I, I think what it would do is help We'd be able to maybe see some landmines uh, that a uh, non-attorney wouldn't see when they're trying to develop the law so um, or, or write an ordinance. So I believe that would be helpful. I, I think what also is helpful is, as an attorney, we do constituent services every day. We're always helping people with the issues that they find difficult. And so uh, I think that is also uh, transferable to the city council. So I believe the skill set that I developed as an attorney is a skill set that would be valuable as a city councilor. 
And last but not least, this will go on after 8 o'clock when the polls are closed. What do you want to say to the residents of Ward 5 one way or the other? I would say uh, thank you for inviting me into your homes. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen to what I have to say. Uh, thank you for coming out in this rain and voting for me. And uh, win or lose, I love this city, and I'll always be here. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Good to see you. Good luck. Thank you. And we also went over to Ward 6 earlier. They were very smart over in Ward 6. We saw tents around the city where uh, different people were gathered, but uh, both the candidates, uh, Jack Lally, the incumbent, and um, Julio Pomar, one was over in Ward 6, the other one we got here in BCA Studios, and we also caught up with Joyce Asak, the school committee member in Ward 6, who was unopposed. Let's take a look at it and see what they had to say. So, Jack, uh, we're here on a soggy Election Day 2019 here in Ward 6. Uh, how are you feeling today uh, going into the election? I'm, I'm feeling optimistic, you know. I think, I think we've got a, uh, a good, good, you know, good showing. Okay. Despite despite the rain and and uh, you know people have been very receptive and very uh, you know very positive throughout the election cycle and I'm seeing them come in and they're smiling and waving, so you know I we're we're in good we're in good spirits despite the rain. Um, what did you hear when you were out on the campaign trail talking to the voters in Ward Six? Uh, you know issues and things that you're going to be dealing with if you get reelected yeah. in two thousand in 2020. Yeah, no, uh, you know, when I get reelected, it's a lot of things, you know, that, that we've already been focusing on, things like infrastructure. You know, the roads are still bad. We've been making a lot of good progress, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a job that's going to take generations, you know, unless, unless, unless they come up with something that, that really is a big fix. A lot more money. And that's, money. that's what we're working on. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it's, it's got to be done. You know, the fact that it costs a lot of money doesn't somehow make your road better. You know, excuses, excuses, it's still got to be done. But we are, uh, we're continuing to shake things up, we're continuing to move forward, and we're, uh, we're making a lot of good progress. How important is, is it to uh, the citizens of Brockton with a new mayor, two new city councilors at large, uh, to have experience on the council? You know, uh, it's, experience is good. Experience is good. Obviously, I got to say that I'm running for re-election. Right. Uh, but but you know, you know, and also you need you right there. But it's you want to look most importantly at the person's character. You know, if they've been, if 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 they've exist, you know, whether they've been here forever or whether they've been, you know, whether this is their first time out, uh, you got to see. You know, you could have the most qualified person in the world, but if they can't work with other people then it's 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 not going to be productive you you got to make sure that you have somebody who's able to to be productive and to 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 work with other people and how important is it for the city councilors and the mayor and the school committee and the legislative delegation to all work together it's very important you know it's is very important especially you know the councilors we we all talk to each other uh you know we vote one way we vote another we we still have to remain on good terms uh, the, the city is, is best served when we get along with the mayor. We don't, again, we don't have to agree. We don't vote the same way all the time, but you still gotta, you know, still gotta work together. And same with the school committee. Uh, you know, Joyce Azak and I talk a lot. You know, call each other up, update each other, and make sure that, you know, we're helping each other out, and that's, that's productive. Um, you know, we also need to work well with our delegation. You know, if there's a member of our delegation who's not doing their job, it, it hurts the whole city. Mm -hmm. Lastly, uh, this will go on after 8 o'clock when the polls close. So what do you want to say to the residents of Ward 6? Well, I appreciate their support. You know, I'm grateful for, uh, for everything that we've, we've had so far. And I hope that uh, either you cut this part out or I hope that you've reelected me to another term. No, but I appreciate it. I do. Thanks, Jack. Julio Pomar, candidate for Ward 6 City Council. Julio, um, campaign's gone on for a while. Uh, today's election day. Um, what's your reaction to, you know, going out in the community, talking to people, knocking on doors? How, do you, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, the only really issue I've had sort of, I wouldn't say issue, but it's kind of disappointing that there's a rainy day. So I think so many people might not want to come out and vote in the rain. That's happened before. But I'm hoping uh, this morning we had really good numbers um, at, at the Asheville and the Brookfield schools. So people are paying attention. They are coming out to vote. Um, I like to hope that they're voting for me. Um, I, I think I feel really good, actually. So when you were out knocking on doors, the issues that you heard about, uh, things that um, 
either interested you or things that you, if you get elected on uh, today, mm -hmm. uh, something that you would bring forth as an initiative as a city councilor after you get sworn in on the 6th of January? Well, after the 6th of January, one of the biggest things I want to do is really, really revitalize the the, the Lithuanian Village downtown area. It's a it's a zone for business. There is very little business going on there. I think that the uh, the MBTA uh, parking lot needs to be either revamped, expanded, or even put a second floor on that. And I want to bring some more business to that area. That area, the infrastructure, the roads are horrible. There's n it's not really uh, business friendly at all. I, I'm glad there's a huge, uh, there's a big movement to uh, revitalize downtown downtown Brockton and make Brockton better, but you can't, you can't forget about the outside areas, you can't forget about some of the villages, and I really, really want, that's going to be my focus, to clean that area up, make it boom, business like, that's going to be the top of my list. And I think a lot of people always feel, they, they feel the same way, there really is nothing in the village like there used to be 20, 30 years ago, so I really, really want to impact on that. City Council works with the mayor and with the school committee. Uh, recently we've heard about um, a budget crisis that's gone on. Um, do you think it's important for everybody to work together and, uh, you know, for the citizens of Brockton? Oh, absolutely. Regardless of how you feel about the guy in the corner office or how he may, how he may feel about the 12 people down this, across the hall, you have to work together. We have to work and find ways to either compromise or adapt to the things that are coming. Now, this you mentioned, I'm t I know you're talking about the, uh, the school bus issue. Um, that, in my opinion, that... And it fell through the cracks, and it, sh it shouldn't have fallen through the cracks. It's very, very important. And I don't know if it was because of some infighting. I don't know why, but they should never happen. And, I, and when I become city council, I want to make sure that things like that don't happen. And I want to, it's best for the city, and especially when it comes to school, it's best for the kids. you, you got to remember, everything you do is for the kids. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to give you the mic, and you can turn right to the camera, talk directly to the voters. Now, this is airing after 8 o'clock when the polls are closed. So what do you want to say to the residents of Ward 6? Uh, residents of Ward 6, since this is airing after 8 o'clock when the polls are closed, I hope I want to thank you, the ones that voted for me and the ones that uh, were so like me. Uh, please, no matter how you voted for me, whether you voted with me or voted against me, I'm still going to be the best city councilor I can be if I win. And regardless of how you feel about me, um, if I do become a city councilor, I will look for another term. And those of you that didn't vote for me this time, hopefully I'll be able to make you vote for me next time because that's really what I want to do. I want to represent Ward 6. I want to make Ward 6 better. So those of you, like I said, that didn't vote for me this time, Please think of me next time, and I'm going to earn your vote next time. Uh, Ward 6 at the Brookfield School, where there are three precincts that vote. Vote with Joyce Asak, who's a candidate for re-election, but you're unopposed. So you're out here today. How important is it uh, for the kids in the schools to have qualified members of the school committee? Absolutely. Um, thank you. Thank you for, for showing up. We're waiting for you. Um, it's very important. It's very important. It's not just about the day of election. It's about staying involved throughout the whole year. Um, it's not just, you know, attending events. It's being involved in your schools. Go to the schools. Um, be involved with the students. The more familiar they get with your face um, and your name, the more approachable they are. Um, so it's been wonderful, wonderful. So I'm finishing my second term and I am unopposed. So I, I believe we're going on a third term. So, um, and I'm excited. We've, we've had a lot of changes in the, the last four years. So can I just give a couple of quick shout outs? Okay. Absolutely. So in the past four years, we, uh, we partnered. I partnered with Cradles to Crayons. So I just always want to thank them. So for those that don't know what's been going on, we've, we've this year, I think we are up to 8,000 backpacks in the past four years. Nice. Uh, they've given us thousands of books, thousands of toiletries, thousands of school supplies. And next week, I'm going in with my facilities department. Last year they gave me 500 winter jackets, um, hats and gloves to try to help out our teachers because um, a lot of them go into their pockets to try to help some of our students that don't have any money and don't have the jackets and, and the warm clothing that they need. So this is a little bit that helps them out as well. Um, so it's an amazing partnership and I'm so proud of it. So I've been able to give back to all the schools, not just Brookfield and Nashfield, all the schools benefit from those. So it's very important. It's just not about election day. It's about going out there and finding what we can get for our schools, for our students. There's programs that are out there. Um, just staying well informed. This will go on after 8 o'clock when the polls close. So what do you want to tell the residents of your ward in Ward 6? Uh, thank you. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for giving me another 
uh, term to serve you. Um, I'm definitely proud. I'm always humble. And uh, I'm so proud of Ward 6. I mean, this is the only ward I've ever lived in. Um, I went to Brookfield School. So um, just thank you. Thank you. And I'm not going to disappoint you. I'm going to keep, keep fighting the fight. We're going to get as much as we can for our students um, and our schools. So thank you. Here at Election Central at Brockton Community Access Headquarters here at 1 North Main Street. And uh, while we're waiting for numbers, we have some other numbers. We have some finance numbers. Um, uh, leave it to a former campaign treasurer multiple times and uh, the former treasurer of the Democratic City Committee, Larry Curtis, to come up with some numbers. You have uh, financial uh, fundraising for the mayoral candidates and yep. for the councilors yep. at large candidates. I, that we do. Tell us what you have, Larry. Well, I mean, as anybody knows, uh, elections aren't cheap, you know, and it takes a tremendous amount of financial support to put your game plan and implement it in, in the way. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this has really only been about a uh, three-month election. Uh, after the passing of Mayor Carpenter, it really kicked off around July 15th, and uh, sitting city councilor Robert Sullivan raised $150,000 over those, you know, short period of time between July 15th through the end of August, I mean, through the end of um, September 30th. Excuse me, October 30th, because we're in November now. So we raised $150,000. Now, I don't have the breakout of how that comes out versus, you know, Brockton residents versus businesses and things of that nature. But that is a tremendous effort on the part of the uh, Sullivan campaign to raise that amount of money. Um, he, as of his um, November 1st filing, he was still sitting on $33,000, which probably may have been used for media campaigns in the last couple of days. But um, this is what it takes to run a mayoral election. When, uh, as treasurer for Mayor Carpenter, uh, the year that um, he uh, first got elected, he raised just over $70,000 against incumbent Mayor Belzotti. And then the following years after that, in off election years, you would well, you usually raise between thirty, forty thousand dollars. But in an election year, as we had this year, it would not be unrealistic to be raising one hundred twenty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars in order to compete, you know, uh, in in this uh, media that we have out there today. On the downside of of the uh, Jimmy Pereira camp, uh, I want to first of all congratulate Jimmy Pereira for the tremendous job that he's done over the, this election season. Uh, he is certainly. Um, presented himself as a formidable candidate. Unfortunately, the money just did not follow. $42,500 approximately is what Jimmy raised for his campaign going back uh, to the beginning of the year for this 2019 year. Uh, and in a race like this, um, again, tremendous amount of ground support for the Pereira camp, but the money to be able to get his message out there as compared to the 150,000 raised by the Sullivan camp just wasn't there, and that will have an impact on the outcome of this, this election, I'm sure. So let's talk about the mayor's numbers first, and uh, Tom, what have you heard, uh, obviously, that there's a big fundraising edge for Bob Sullivan, um, which I guess you would expect, where he's a 14-year incumbent of a city council. What are your thoughts? Well, I certainly think that money doesn't hurt, that's for sure. Um, but in addition to money, I mean, um, some of the numbers that we see for a council at large, uh, some of the biggest vote getters for council at large, uh, at least one or two of them are on the lower end of the monies raised. So reputation, experience, familiarity with the voters, incumbency, those all matter. Um, you know, doing a good job for your constituency matters. Um, but with, like you said, Larry, with regard to the mayor's race, um, unfortunately, it takes a lot of money. And there's a lot now in terms of different uh, ways to spend money um, to try to effectively get you know, the, your name out there and um, uh, your issues in front of the voters. You know, today around the city of Brockton, I saw a couple of different trucks and they were all lit up. Um, you know, so the, the trucks themselves are sort of like a, 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 a they're box trucks, but there were like a media uh, signboard, electronic signboards on all four, uh, on the front, the back, 
the both sides. The I was driving billboards. right exactly, <laughs> and and it's, um, they can't be cheap to be you know running and renting and leasing those trucks around the city on election day. Um, I saw one of them on my way up from the office on Route 3. Um, it just basically didn't say anyone's name, it just said, you know, election day, November 5th, vote, but it was the same uh, uh, purple and white, bright, bright sign. So certainly uh, candidates can rent those trucks and have it tailored to whatever it is, you know, their colors, their signs, their uh, issues. So, um, you know, getting the word out is, is what it is, and, you know, social media and all the accoutrements with that cost money and you need pe people also to that are savvy and can you know navigate the, social the other, media you know the other side of this also is that there's a tremendous amount of if you want to call it in-kind contributions that come from outside you know packs and things of that nature that aren't part of this fundraising effort but uh, you see traditionally a lot of the local unions will send out literature or flyers supporting a candidate and you know that's not part of the hundred and fifty thousand dollars that was raised or Jimmy's forty two thousand dollars that's above and beyond yeah. you know and that's an expense that's being picked up by a third party but in support of the candidate at that right. point. And, you know on that vein um, you know uh, on the west side of Brockton um, almost every morning at that busy west intersection west and Pleasant Street intersection yep. there were you know uh, at least I don't know twenty to thirty uh, members of a union you know holding signs for a particular candidate running for mayor mm -hmm. and you know like you said they're not charging anyone but that's on top of the financial the, investment the with it. Yeah. That we so exactly. that's certainly worth a heck of a lot. I would say that's worth a lot of money. It's a tremendous know, amount. Uh, two mm -hmm. things I noticed in this campaign that I hadn't noticed in previous campaigns even the uh, the new candidates had the gigantic signs I mean you know usually the, the, only the uh, Mm -hmm. Long-time candidates had the money for those. Yep. Now, the new candidates are, must be raising enough money to buy these big, the, the real, the real big signs. You never used to see that. The other thing I noticed was that the handout cards that most of the candidates will give to people at their doors and stuff. It, it used to be political death if you didn't have the union bug at the bottom of the handout card. If you didn't use a union printing shop. Now, at least half, if not more than half have printed with in-house labor. In other words, they don't pay the extra to get the union, the union bug on there to, to have it done in a union shop. So those are the two real major differences I noticed in this, this camp. Well, there's been no doubt that the four by eight posters that have been all over the city, uh, and, and quite honestly, that goes back to Mayor Carpenter. He was the one who really initiated that back six years ago, you know, for name recognition, and it worked. There's no question it worked, and I think you're going to see it work for some of our at-large candidates in particular today, you know, uh, when the results finally come in. But you are, you are right. Those are not inexpensive. Uh, when you look at the weather conditions that we've had over the last month, how signs get blown away, torn, you know, some of them vandalized, as we've seen a couple instances this year. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of money to, to keep that. Well, they have that, the new corrugated idea. plastic signs now that, that well, yeah, hold yeah. up to them. Yeah, but what's right? holding up to them, but the little metal uh, frames are not. Correct. You know, <laughs> you know, the, the corrugated plastic is fine. I, I saw so many of the metal signs with one leg, uh, you know, snapped, snapped off, off, but the sign looks great. You know, so yeah. uh, a, a lot of candidates you could see were going around town and <clears throat> uh, replacing, you know, those metal stakes mm -hmm. uh, because in the last couple of weeks there's been some pretty stormy weather where the leaves have come down as you can see in the city of Brockton and the streets all over the place mm -hmm. everyone's sort of scrambling this weekend to get their leaves done not the political candidates however <laughs> who are out there running but um, yeah it, it is amazing but and that is a, a valid point there are a lot of the huge signs and I, I think for a lot of people in Brockton I think they're kind of glad that the election's over because I've never seen more signs in Brockton on people's lawns yeah. And I think people would like to go back without the signs and back to just, you know, looking at nice lawns and uh, well, well, snow's on its way. <laughs> and the key there is that 
starting tomorrow, please pick up your signs yes, and get rid of them. Yeah, <laughs> get, there, we, there, we turn our city to a, the beautiful yeah, city that there it is. Are, there <laughs> are still signs out there for people that lost in September, and they should all go down. See, in Easton, they basically have an or, a, a ordinance or a law that you can only have them 30 days before, and, thir and they have to go down within a certain period of time yeah. right after. Well, there's so. a suggestion for the new mayor, Mark. But a lot of people really should take the time to zip around and pick up their signs, because they cost a lot of money. And if they decide to run again for, you know, the same position, position you know, um, rather than have you know, your constituency throw them out because, you know, trash day on, on the west side is on Thursday. So if you don't get your signs in by that day, you're going to see them out by the side of the road. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, it is a lot of money that's been invested. So people should run around fairly quickly and, and pick up their signs, especially at the uh, polling places. Uh, you know, neighbors yeah. get very aggravated. Uh, I know in many of the schools, as... Uh, Steve mentioned the Brookfield School has three precincts. Uh, there's got to be a lot of signs lying around in the front of that uh, building. Uh, it, it will be greatly appreciated by uh, you know, all the parents you know, and the staff if you could come around and, and, and grab your signage. It's an investment that shouldn't be thrown away. So I know we're, Tom's phone over My here. My phone's blow, blowing, blowing up. up like yes, a it is. It is blowing up. He's gotten up. a lot of information yep. and. Um, you know, there's a lot of information out there on Facebook. Uh, there are 28 precincts here in the city of Brockton. Uh, each ward has four, A, B, C, and D. And uh, then there are eight candidates uh, running for uh, council at large in the election. Um, we also have people out at the headquarters right now um, getting us some video of the um, uh, candidates, both Bob Sullivan and uh, Jimmy Pereira, and uh, we're going to have that back shortly. Uh, Tom, what have you seen? We're not going to actually go mm -hmm. over hard and fast yeah. numbers because we don't have them typed in, and it takes a long time to do that to get. We're getting individual printouts off of a screen to our phones of each yeah. precinct. So then you got to take those precincts and add them up A, B, C, and D and put them up on the screen. So, Tom, what have you seen coming in? So, with respect to Ward 3, my, my colleague Mark D'Agostino, the incumbent, um, I've received a notification that uh, he did very well in, in that ward and that uh, he will be uh, rejoining me on the school committee. Um, I've also uh, been informed in that ward also that uh, <clears throat> Dennis Ioneri has done very well and will be rejoining uh, the city council in that ward. Uh, I saw some uh, numbers um, with regard to the council at large race and um, consistently, uh, you know, uh, you know, Councillor Farwell and Councillor you know, Rodriguez uh, have done very well, uh, but it, um, it, 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 it's a tight race with, in that ward with respect to the uh, remaining two seats. Uh, so th I think those numbers are a little bit too uh, tight to start naming off names. But, uh, uh, you know, Councillor Farwell and Councillor Rodriguez uh, uh, have done uh, well in, in Ward 3. Um, and in, with regard to the mayor's race in that ward, uh, candidate uh, Robert Sullivan did uh, very well um, in, in that race. So. That's the information in Ward 3 that I've, re I've received. Okay, we do have a video from Sullivan headquarters. Um, our own Emma Reardon went over there and uh, she got us video of Robert Sullivan. Let's take a look and see what we have to report. Really good for Brock, and so we're gonna yes. celebrate. Yes. We're gonna respect Jimmy Pereira. He ran a heck of a campaign, uh, but right now we're gonna go over to sidelines and really enjoy this. And uh, tonight's a new night for Brock, and so thank you to everybody. Thank you. Yeah, great. So, <laughs> whatever you want to say. So, we're here at the headquarters on Belmont Street, and it looks uh, very favorable. The results just came in. They're unofficial, uh, but it looks like um, uh, I'm the mayor-elect, and it's an honor and a privilege. A lot of dedicated, hard work people over the last four months, um, but we did it the old-fashioned way. We reached out. Uh, we listened to people. We talked about the issues, and I'm just thrilled and honored um, that the, the voters in Brockton uh, have, have brought me forward. And I want to, uh, first of all, thank Jimmy Pereira for running a very, very professional campaign as well. Um, but tonight, um, the, the voters spoke, and I'm really, really thrilled that experience matters, leadership matters, 
and uh, we're going to work together to unify Brockton for a better day. Um, Brockton is going to be moving in the right direction with the City of Champions, and we're going to go down swinging, and really the future is bright for us. So thank you very much to all the voters that went out today on a rainy day, and I want to thank everybody here, um, my friends, my family, everybody here worked extremely hard, and I want to thank the voters of Brockton. Thank you. Okay, and we're back here live in a studio. Um, obviously, Bob Sullivan knows what we don't officially know by the numbers. Um, I have seen some numbers. I, I'm, I'm basically going to give you a general overview. It looks like it's uh, close to 9,800 votes for Bob Sullivan and 6,800 votes for Jimmy Pereira, so about uh, just under a 3,000 margin spread for the mayor's race. What we're probably going to do is we're going to talk for a little bit. If we get the numbers in, in a timely fashion, um, we definitely want to get video from Pereira headquarters, so we're certainly not going to go off the air until that happens. But what we might do is at the end of the broadcast, we might just put the numbers up and, and let them speak for themselves. So what's, uh, I'll, I'll go to Steve first with your reaction on what you heard. Well, it's not all that surprising, Bob Sullivan, uh, having been around for a long time. Uh, lots of people know him. Lots of people are happy with his job uh, as a city councilor at large. A lot of, obviously, he has been the council president four different times, I believe it is. So a lot of people knew him, and, um, and he obviously had the manpower to do, the, as Tom mentioned earlier, the standouts and stuff like that. So... And, and the plus, money, like Larry mentioned. He has the money, plus he's, he, he's a good-looking guy. He's got a good-looking wife, nice family, the whole bit. I mean, it's, there's, not, there's not anything to not like. Sounds know? like he's Steve Foote's hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it is what it is. And then Jimmy Pereira, basically, it looks like he got a few more votes than he did the last time. He got his 6,000, which is certainly nothing to, you know, turn your nose up Absolutely at him. Absolutely not. He did very, very well. Uh, good looking guy, maybe, good looking family, good again, looking everything, yes, you know, all thing. the same so, checks, boom, boom, boom. So maybe, uh, maybe his uh, calling is uh, maybe as a counselor at large in the future or well, just the maybe right time. Uh, something else down the road. So uh, you never I know. think we'll hear from him again. Okay, Larry? Well, I think the, the voter margin, you know, if you take the numbers that are being at least displayed on the uh, social media right now, you said 6,800, 9,700. You know, that's almost a 17% spread, you know, in the difference of, of the uh, percentage of, of votes uh, that Bob Sullivan won and captured uh, successfully. Uh, pundits, myself included, was, I was looking at probably a 7% margin, you know, to go to 17%. Um, that is going to pose a very interesting dynamic as it transitions into the counselor at large race. Um, uh, you know, some people were pitting this as a uh, race against of the diversity of the two cultures, the white middle class um, voters against the minority voters that I'd mentioned earlier in the program, the different segments of that. Um, if this voter percentage rate holds true in the council at large race, you may see a de definite different council at large, um, you know, face uh, going forward. I think that it's pretty hard to win the mayor's race without holding an elected office prior to running for the mayor. And I think, you know, Bill Carpenter was on the school committee, also very well known in the city, radio personality, owned an insurance agency, realtor, uh, sportscaster, et cetera, et cetera. Number one thing, as far as I'm concerned, extremely likable extremely likable person um, and um, you know Bob Sullivan has been you know Brocktonian throughout his whole life his parents have been here his family's been here is here um, held the seat number one vote getter for I don't know how many years as council at large um, very well established um, and again we lost you know we lost you know, our friend Bill um, in, in, in some unfortunate circumstances. And, and when you have that sort of upheaval, I think that people, in, you know, with regard to the mayor, want confidence and stability. Um, and I think Bob, you know, 
breeds that. And I think, you know, I think at the right time, the right person. And um, so uh, I'm, I think we all knew it was going to be close just because of, you know, like you said, uh, Larry, you know, the city is changing, the makeup of the city is changing. But um, even so, I think people picked in this race, if the numbers hold the way they are, I think they wanted confidence, stability, someone, an even hand, someone that, um, you know, Bob is an even hand. He's not uh, flamboyant. He's certainly not uh, a boisterous guy. He's a very steady, uh, well, you know, well thought person in terms of, you know, not making quick decisions. Um, so good choice. Um, he does his due diligence as he likes to say. There you go. So, uh, but again, you know, Jimmy Pereira, um, He's been, you know, running for the race. He's certainly been doing well every, you know, every election he's had. But I still do think it's hard not holding any elected position at all uh, and, and, you know, becoming the mayor. Um, can it be done? Of course it can be done. But I just think that um, having $150,000 in the bank and having uh, an even hand and a long history as a successful uh, political counselor at large, I, I, I'll take those odds. Well, I mean, I think also the fact of the matter is that we're a $450 million city budget, you know, and when you're a homeowner, you're an investor, you're a, a, a business owner here in the city, um, do I want to turn a $450 million budget over to an untested, you know, uh, individual? You know, I think that was certainly on the minds of many of the voters out there going forward. Uh, and um, you are right, Bob's 14 years of experience. Uh, has shined through and now he's worked 14 years he's been on seven budgets <laughs> under four different mayors now so and the, and the other thing that I think is is wonderful about this city and and that is that yeah we are a diverse community um, and you see a lot of very successful people uh, from all parts of the world in this community uh, that you know come here and take advantage of the opportunities and work hard and um, a lot of those people, those business owners, those people that have investments, uh, I know broke for Bob Sullivan, even though, uh, you know, ethnicity lines Correct. is the other way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they have investments. They want to make sure that the city, like you said, the budget is run correctly because um, there's a lot at stake, you know, not only for them personally, but, you know, their community and jobs and, you know, looking out for the well-being of the entire city. You know, I think, too, you know, Brockton's a working-class city. And I think there's something to be said for somebody that work, twists their way up through the ranks and works their way up the ladder to the top job. We saw in previous years uh, Jay Stewart try to come right, right in and jump into the mayor's race. He was unsuccessful. Uh, Jimmy Pereira has done the same thing here. He's, you know, I mean, he got a lot of votes, but he's still nevertheless in the end unsuccessful. You saw Stewart run for council at large later. He won there. So... I think there's something to be said for Brocktonians like to see, you know, hard scrabble guys twist their way up through the ranks and people that have been here for a long time that they can relate to, that have been to school here, gone to school here, worked their way up. I think there's something to be said for that part of it. Okay, so we, um, we do have somebody over at uh, City Hall. Lynn Smith has been helping to look at numbers and again, everything's unofficial period today it has to get certified and everything like that and there's some other um, you know obviously they have to look and cross every I and dot every I'll try that again dot every I and cross every T anyway but that 97 94 for Sullivan and 68 64 for Pereira seems like it is what the number is citywide and obviously we got the information from Bob Sullivan mm -hmm. we're just uh, waiting those counts are at large um, Council of Lodge could be a little more difficult because you got the, the four seats there and eight people going for four seats and, you know, it could be a matter of just a few votes for the last spot or the third and fourth spot as opposed to the fifth spot. So it's hard to tell, but we still, and we still haven't received much word on, if any word, on Council at Lodge yet and left a lot of interest in that race as well. So. Okay. Tom, do you have any more information being sent to you? You, you um, well, with respect to uh, with respect to uh, Ward Two, uh, I'm told that um, Tony Donegan uh, did not um, uh, win, and that uh, 
his. We have um, some Ward Two numbers here. Yep. Ward Two numbers. Here we go. There. Ward Two numbers. And Cynthia Rivas Mendez <clears throat> will be joining me on the school committee, um, and uh, we will welcome her to the school committee. And, she's and how a much of name recognition was uh, that bump? Mendez with Rita Mendez running as a counselor at large, which well, she did yeah. extremely well. I don't think it hurts. <laughs> no, I certainly don't think it hurts. We have three Sullivans on yeah. the ballot. Yeah. Uh, every, yeah. You know, this time Judy yeah. Sullivan, Tim Sullivan, and Bob Sullivan. So that certainly doesn't hurt. <laughs> and uh, we saw the counselor uh, number for uh, Tom Monahan, who was unopposed, unopposed and, yeah. and reelected <laughs> in Ward Two. Tom's another guy uh, that. Uh, uh, goes back to what I was saying earlier about Bob Sullivan, you know, worked his way, you know, been, been from Brockton all his life, went to school here, worked his way up, twisted his way up through the ranks. I, I really believe that has a lot to do with, you know, how people feel in Brockton as far as their elected representatives go. Tom, do you have any Ward 1 numbers at all for uh, the Tim Cruz, uh, Steve? Just a, race? I, I just have numbers that Tim is doing well. Yeah. That's about it. That's what, yeah. I, that's what I have as well. Um, certainly interested uh, other elections that are out there just to take a, take a rundown. Um, in, uh, we just looked at two. Ward 3 numbers, uh, certainly we have the, you know, we have the Mark D'Agostino, Alan Green, you know, not the actual numbers, but the fact that incumbent Mark D'Agostino was reelected. And uh, it, Tom, did I hear it right? I've been trying to pay attention to a little bit of everything here tonight. Uh, Dennis and Marlon Green, what have you uh, seen? I've, the, the preliminary numbers I've seen, Dennis did, Dennis Ionieri did very well, um, and we'll be rejoining the city council. Okay, and uh, for both the candidates, uh, both counselor and ward, school committee in Ward 4 are unopposed, so Tony Rodriguez will be the first, uh, I believe, Cape Verdean elected in Ward to the school committee, to the school committee, because the city mm -hmm. council had people that are Cape Verdean descent. We're looking forward to hearing about Ward 5. We haven't heard anything about that yet. That yeah. is uh, uh, Cindy Ethiakoska and uh, Jeff Thompson, who are running in Ward 5 um, for that race. Um, and uh, certainly Ward 6 incumbent uh, counselor uh, Jack Lally uh, versus Julio Pomar. In that, in that election, Julio had run as a candidate before. And uh, Ward 7, um, we, we saw both Rita Asak, who's the incumbent, and Michael Nunes, who um, the only, I, I got a chance to meet him and talk to him at the NAACP candidate. Um, they had all, like a meet the candidates event early on in the election season. Um, Shirley, Shirley. Shirley Asak. Right. Did you say Rita? No, I didn't. I oh, think. I, I don't Rita. know. Maybe I did. Because I, they list her as Shirley Rita, Rita Azak, right. as opposed to Joyce, Rita. Okay. Joyce hmm. Azak, and I don't know if Joyce's middle name is on there. Joyce J. Azak. Yeah. You know, election ballots are all formal, and usually, a lot of times, they don't have middle names. Um, in, 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 in Masonic tradition, we have to list our middle names for everything. Um, I, I use my middle initial anyway. So um, the big one that we're interested in, and again, you're counting 28 precincts, seven wards, that counselor at large race. That is like on everybody's mind right now. I haven't seen numbers. We're going to be getting um, a fax with all the final numbers, and uh, we're going to we're, we're really waiting for our, you know video from Jimmy Pereira headquarters because I'd like to see what. Jimmy had to say, I did invite a few people to come on tonight. I think they're at election headquarters versus being here. Uh, you know, we, we, we had seats available for anybody that wanted to come down, candidates that won or lost. Some candidates are around the city at um, different places. Uh, I know Bob Sullivan's over, uh, going over to Doyle's, and um, Jimmy Pereira's over at George's, and uh, Councilor Firewell and Councilor Lally are both at Tin Rays. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they'll leave the lights on for us when we get off the air if we want to go over there. I hope so. there's, a, there's a cold there waiting for me at Tin Rays. I hope so. <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. Um, so we're just waiting on, on some numbers. I think what I would like to do at this point, if we could, is put up the slate with the music and take a little bit of of a break mm -hmm. and then we'll regroup and we'll come back with uh, more election coverage. Um, stay tuned, watch BCA uh, and we'll be back.
And we're back live here in studio uh, at BCA Studios. Um, we do have results in the uh, mayor's race and in the council at large race. Let's take a look at the official, well, the unofficial numbers that will be certified in the mayor's race. If we could take a look at those numbers, please. Mayor's race. Okay, so those are the numbers that uh, we saw before. I just wanted to make sure they were firm at this point. Uh, so the win is Robert Sullivan, city councilor, city pr council president. Um, instead of being acting mayor when the mayor's out of town, he will be the mayor when he's sworn in on January 6th. 9,794 votes to Jimmy Pereira's 6,000. 864 votes. Congratulations to Bob Sullivan. Um, let's go right to the council at large race because these are numbers that people have been waiting for all night. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm not going to read, I'm going to read them in order. We have Moses Rodriguez, the interim mayor who ran for re-election to his councilor at large seat and he topped the ticket at 9,113 votes. Uh, next up after him would be Wynn Farwell with 6,739 votes. He was also re-elected. Um, next in line, third place, is Rita Mendez, a first-time candidate, new candidate, um, a mother, not a politician. That was her slogan. Politician, no. <laughs> okay. And uh, Tina Cardoso at 5,461. So those are the numbers for the top four. Um, right after that, following up. After that is um, Kevin Borges, 3999, 3,999 votes, one, sh one vote shy of, um, you know, in, in, in fifth place. Um, Ann Beauregard, 3,792, the incumbent counselor in Ward 5 running for uh, city councilor at large. She did not make the cut. And then we have Adias Pierre with 3,142 votes. And last uh, but not least, I guess, 3,031 votes, Gary Keith Sr. So we have two incumbent counselors reelected, Moses Rodriguez and Winthrop Farwell, and two new women on the city council, Rita Mendez and Tina Cardoso. Minority women. Yes. So uh, we'll, go, we'll go back and we'll... Uh, you know, kind of discuss this, and when we'll, we'll, we're going to wait. Uh, Pereira has not gone to his headquarters to concede at this point in time. Would like to show you that video. We do have Ward 1. Tom, you want to go over the Ward 1 numbers? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, we have for Ward 1 City Council, uh, the information that I received was accurate, and that is Timothy Cruz, 1585, over challenger Steve Lanus, 921, and for school committee, uh, Thomas Minicello will be returning 2,089 votes. In a landslide, right? It was, it was neck and neck, but I pulled it off. There you I go. I just pulled it off. Okay. So congratulations, Tom. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Okay, and uh, I'm not sure if we have more numbers. We're back live on the set. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, we talked about a little bit about the mayor's race, but I just wanted to make sure the numbers were accurate. So um, the, the percentage that came out, um, we didn't post that, but um, looks like it's 57.87 for Robert Sullivan to Jimmy Pereira's 40.56. Um, everyone that I talked to, it was either going to be um, a major victory for Bob Sullivan or it was going to be close. There were some people here that said it was going to be close, and there are some of us that, some of you that said it was going to be um, you know, major, and it was it was major by 2,930 votes, 57, almost 60 percent of the votes, close to 60, 40. Um, what are you guys thinking right now? Well, uh, your counselor at large race, I, I still never understood why Ann Borgard gave up a basically a locked seat in Ward Five to run for a counselor at large. Now she's out completely. So. She said when she ran, she was only going to run for two terms, and she was going to give someone else a chance at her seat. That's what she said. She okay. went on the record both the elections and said she was only going to be two terms. And also historic, the two people that got in, the two new people, both women, both minorities. Yep. Um, well, Tina, Tina Cardoso, second time she ran in Ward 3 for uh, city council. Right. She mm -hmm. got a lot of visibility over there and she's been very visible in the community. Um, Rita Mendez, 
brand new person running for office, never been in elected office, um, you know, recognition, visibility. You know, when you're talking real estate, it's real, you know, location, location, location. She had some pretty big signs and her picture was on it and sometimes you come up with a slogan and it either sticks or it bombs. In her case, it stuck. I noticed one thing that was interesting there too was because her, Rita Mendez and Kevin Borges actually live on the same street. Yes, they, 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 they do live on the same street right over on the Whitman line almost. Uh, so even though the, Brockton's a big city, it's still a small town too. It, it oh, sure I is. I always consider Brockton a very small town. Um, well, I mean, look, and you know what's interesting is comparing the, the funding uh, with regard to Larry's numbers. Um, you know, uh, Councilor Rodriguez, Mayor Rodriguez, came in with a little over $10,000 in his campaign war chest. But if you go down to the bottom, second is, is Wynn Farwell, who, who uh, brought in the least, $3,400. And then you have the second to least is uh, uh, Ms. Cardozo with 4600 And then a little bit more, uh, you jump up a bit, and that's uh, Attorney Mendez, um, 8755 But she did have a lot of those large signs all over the place that uh, Steve was talking about. So I just got word we do have all the numbers. So let's okay. take a look. Let's go over next to uh, Ward 2, if we could, and take a look at the numbers in Ward 2, that school committee race um, and the city council race for Ward 2. Okay, Ward 2, um, Tom, as you had said earlier, um, Cynthia Rivas Mendes is elected, 863 votes to Anthony Joseph Donovan Jr. for 500 and 82 votes. That was the only school committee debate that took place over at the Brockton Public Library. Very respectful, each one of the two candidates, different strengths that were brought to the table. Tony had served on the school committee before, and it was a newcomer teacher that got elected, and of course, Tom Monahan, unopposed, 1,196. Yeah, just on the, your comment about very respectful debate, both people very um, intelligent, uh, um, Cynthia Mendez, you know, a, a Boston special uh, education teacher, um, certainly knows her business. Um, and both uh, candidates certainly knew the issues, um, and uh, we will obviously welcome uh, her to the committee. We have the Ward 1 numbers up on the screen. The official count, uh, Tim Cruz, 1,585 votes to Steve Lanus's 921 votes. I would say that's very respectable for a first-time candidate that uh, hadn't run for office before. I mean, Tim's the long-term incumbent, and he's been very involved in politics in the city. He was the campaign manager for former Mayor Jack Units, and he was part of the Kennedy Cruz family, okay? Mm -hmm. And Tom, there, there are your numbers up there. Let's go over to take a look at whatever we have next on the screen, maybe Ward 3. Uh, there's the numbers. I'll let uh, Steve take that one. Well, uh, long-term incumbent Tennessee and Erie, one big uh, 1,875 votes to uh, multiple-time challenger Marlon Green's 583. And I think, uh, you know, Tennessee and Erie has uh, re-cemented himself in that spot, and he's not going anywhere. Uh, Ward 3 School Committee, uh, Mark D'Agostino, the incumbent, at 1,785, and uh, Alan Green, at 569, again, <clears throat> uh, quite a margin. And uh, I think Mark D'Agostino is uh, uh, well entrenched there as well. Well, it, it, the D'Agostino uh, election is interesting because, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, he initially mentioned he was going to not run for re-election, and then about 10 days later, there was a change of heart there. You know, what was behind that? Any ideas? <laughs> well, I think he, he saw that... Um, he was going to miss the committee. Um, he thought that he could still do some things. You know, we had always been talking about the big issue for I think a lot of us is that we want to put through um, the bonding and funding for the renovation of Brockton High School. It's, it's, it's really due. It needs to be um, done soon. Uh, all the surrounding towns here, of all new schools mm -hmm. up to date. You know, Holbrook just opened up Bridgewater not too long ago, yep. East Bridgewater, West Bridgewater, Abington. Um, you know, uh, um, Stoughton, 
you know, it's time for Brockton High School now to go through you know, a, a renovation. That's not a school that will be you know, uh, casting aside, but it needs to be fully re restored and renovated up to date. Ward 4, uh, once you take that, Tom, both yep. of the candidates were unopposed. Unopposed, yep. Susan DeCastro uh, comes in at 1745, and Tony Rodriguez came in at 1767. Uh, Tony, who I've met, um, he's a, a, a friend of Brett Gormley, the outgoing school committee m uh, member, and he, um, you know, he will be a nice addition to the school committee. It'll be good to work with Tony. Okay, Ward 5. Uh, Larry, you want to take Ward 5? Jeffrey Thompson. Uh, Attorney, uh, actually working in the same law office as I believe uh, Rita Mendez works over down the law offices down there in East Ashland and, and, and Montello. Uh, a very close race when you think of it as just, uh, you know, under 100 and some odd votes there. Um, both candidates campaigned well for that vacant seat. Obviously, as you mentioned, Mark and Beauregard did step down. Stephen mentioned that. Uh, so. That was a uh, very close race under the circumstances, and uh, you know Jeffrey prevailed there in the end. So uh, congratulations for Jeffrey Thompson now. And Judy Sullivan with 18, 19 votes. Uh, it was 133 vote spread, and I believe in Ward 5 that uh, Jury Smith had endorsed Jeff Thompson, so she was the third candidate in the preliminary. Ward 6, um, I'll leave that to Steve. Okay, you got Jack Lally re-elected at 1,792 votes, Julio Poma at 430 votes. Uh, this is Lally's third election, I believe, and um, uh, Poma, uh, too, too little too late, you know, just not enough. And uh, Joyce Azak uh, at 1,877 re-elected to the school committee. She's doing a fine job, and I, she's never had an opponent, so. Yep. Okay, let's take a look at Ward 7 numbers. Tom, you want to do the Ward 7 numbers? And certainly. Uh, Shirley Azak is the incumbent, has defeated uh, Michael Noons, uh, 1207 to 516. Uh, Timothy Sullivan, my colleague on the school committee, unopposed, uh, and even 1,500 votes. Okay, so we, we have given you all the numbers in all the different races. Uh, just to recap one more time, the mayor's race, 9,794 votes. Robert Sullivan is elected the, is it the 40, 50th mayor of Brockton, if I'm not mistaken? I think I'm Moses sure. was the 49th as Pointed interim mayor, right. so mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think uh, Bob Sullivan is the 50th, and Jimmy Pereira at 6864. Uh, Councilor at large race, one more time. Moses Rodriguez tops the ticket in, in Current mayor, interim mayor, um, I think the whole entire city of Brockton owes him a debt of gratitude for stepping in after his colleagues elected him at the city council to keep things stable in the city. And he wanted to go right back to the council, okay, to be, uh, he may be back as the council president. Uh, Wynn Farwell, uh, incumbent councilor, former mayor, former school committee member, coming in second, 6739. Uh, third place, Rita Mendez, brand new face in Brockton politics, 5570, and then Tina Cardoso, 5461. Uh, just to go over the other numbers, Kevin Borges was fifth, 3999, almost 4,000 votes. Um, Ann Beauregard following after him, 3792. Um, and Adias Pierre, 3142. And Gary Keith, 3031. So those are all the races and all the numbers. Um, I think we're good with the numbers. Let's just do a little bit more post analysis and then we will uh, sign off for the night because we did, we went through all the numbers. Uh, Larry, I'm going to kick well, it to I'm, you. You're I'm ready just gonna, to I'm pounce. just going to make a side observation that, uh, you know, at City Council at large as well as Ward 5, we now have also elected two additional attorneys to the uh, City Council. Uh, Bob Sullivan, obviously, as an attorney. Susan DeCastro, Ward 4 attorney as well. Um, we seem to be loading up on uh, attorneys uh, in, the, in the, the city election office. Tom, I know you're an attorney as well over there on the school committee side. So uh, are we going to see a trend here? <laughs> well, it looks like they've been successful. You know, Rita Mendez and, you know, Jeff Thompson. Um, uh, I, I think that it's not going to hurt because there's a lot of issues that come up, to be honest with you, uh, in city politics where having um, 
some knowledge of the law comes in very handy. Um, we um, certainly defer to you know our respective counsel, but um, it, it, it's never a um, it doesn't it doesn't uh, hurt you to have you know some additional legal analysis and, and opinions to formulate ideas in terms of solving problems. I would um, agree with you there. Yeah. Uh, you know. yeah. Mm -hmm. Steve? Well, uh, it's kind of a little of both. You got the old guard in the wards to carry in the day, and then the counselor at large got some new faces. So it uh, should be interesting to see how they all get along and work out uh, the problems of the city. Um, we are trying to figure out whether we're going to have video from the Pereira headquarters Sometimes when you aren't successful, you want to have a cold one and go home for the night. Go collect your signs the next day. I did that at about 5.30 in the morning um, just to get rid of them, put them all in a trunk someplace and put them away. Um, we're, 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 uh, well, it's obviously got to be a big letdown so Jimmy, you know I mean? Uh, it is. He worked hard and he's been at it a long time and maybe, you know, sometimes you just... You, you give it your all, your all until the final push, and then there's nothing left. I was over at that headquarters today, and it was very active. There was a, like a war room with all sorts of people making calls. There were offices. There were over 1351 Main Street on the south side of town. It, it was a ton of people, a beehive of activity. They, uh, Jimmy had a professional campaign manager that he hired, Kevin Higgins, who is, uh, is, is, is a veteran. He's been involved in a lot of campaigns. He works for a political consulting firm. He, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I know that he must be disappointed. I do, we do have interviews with both Tina Cardoso and Jimmy Pereira. Nubi Rateau came and helped us tonight, and he's heading back to the studio and we'll be here in 10 minutes. So we get another 10 minutes to fill because we want to see that. It's, yeah. it's always good. I, I, I want to thank our, our staff, our volunteers, and everybody for helping bring coverage to, to the city of Brockton. Um, we, there are two forms of coverage in Brockton, newspaper and cable TV. We don't presently have a licensed radio station here in the city of Brockton, so we're bringing you these numbers, and then we will post them up on our channel tomorrow. So any other commentary? You, you know, Mark, going back to what we said earlier, and everybody uh, was talking about uh, more lawyers being involved in the, uh, in the, on the school committee with Tom and, in, and also in the council. I think we're going to need to end with, with Mayor-elect Sullivan as well. We have a couple of real big lawsuits facing this city that could put us in some serious financial jeopardy. I think we need, you know, I mean, a lot of people want to say, oh, yeah, we don't want lawyers, but I think we, we're going to need these, these legal uh, experts in this, well, this coming few years. If you look at the council in the past, you had Tom Brophy on the council. He left the council to be a clerk magistrate. I think it's going to be a mix of people with different backgrounds. You've got 11 city councilors, you have seven school committee members, you have a mayor. So we have a, a, an attorney as the mayor. We now have two attorneys on the city council, and we have one attorney on the school committee. I, I personally think it is very helpful, be, and people have different backgrounds, but I think in the end, when you're sitting down and you're pouring over legal documents, union contracts, um, you know, major contracts for the city it's what helpful. the average person has to understand too is if if these uh, couple of lawsuits that we have these are major lawsuits for big amounts of money and if if Brockton loses these suits or can't settle these suits the ta the taxpayers are going to be the ones the homeowners especially are going to be the ones that are going to pay the freight it's going to come down to them. the average person in Brockton is going to feel this if we get wiped out on these two lawsuits so there's a lot of work ahead. Uh, but again, Bob Sullivan's an attorney. He's got a lot of work ahead with this, and hopefully he'll be able to uh, use his uh, people skills and work it out. One of the things he said to me on, on when we recorded him earlier today is he wants to get some citizens groups together right after he takes office to you know talk about the issues of the city and work together to solve the problems of the city. I think that's good. Mayor Units, if you remember, did town hall meetings when there was some, he had some good budget times and a little bit of tough budget times, and he went around the city, I remember, to the middle schools, to west, north, south, and east, and he conducted, you know, citizen participation so people could get priorities um, on that. Um, I know in the past, 
when we had budget issues over at the schools, Tom, that um, there was a, like a meeting of all the minds. It was the city council, the school committee, the mayor, and even the folks from Southeastern back in over at the War Memorial about probably 10 years ago. Yeah, we, I mean, we still have issues with regard to the funding in the schools. However, uh, hopefully with the uh, legislation that's going through on Beacon Hill, um, happier times will be here uh, in the next budget cycle. But um, yeah, we've, we've, we've had the cooperation of uh, the mayor, uh, Mayor Carpenter, uh, and we've had the cooperation of the city council with respect to making things work on the public, on, you know, for the Brockton Public Schools um, in very tough financial times. And you know, sometimes we have to you know, cobble budgets together from different sources, and that's basically what has been done to make sure that the students have what they need. Um, and it's been done uh, very cautiously and very carefully. Um, um, I, I don't think that people should get uh, as nervous as some uh, recently want to make things out to be. Um, there, there are no reckless decisions, um, especially with respect to our school budget, just details that need some time and will be worked out and we, we always knew would be worked out. But um, yeah, tough times are ahead. Um, you know, like Steve mentioned, the, um, you know, there are pending legal matters on the city side, but um, you know, in discussions with um, you know, the financial people here in the city, I also know that um, you know, there's bonding uh, that can take place that um, uh, the city is not going to be going bankrupt or going into receivership over these you know, potential issues. Um, but you know, there's work to be done because you know, there's lawyers uh, that are making decisions and recommendations as to where things stand, what will be successful and what might not be successful. Um, you know, uh, Attorney Nezarella, very capable. Uh, you know, he's working on these cases and he will recommend to uh, the next mayor, you know, the direction to go in. Um, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but your the school committee has mm -hmm. a finance committee, which is the committee of the whole, mm -hmm. just like the city council does. And you, the school committee does a majority of its work in subcommittee. <laughs> that there's a lot of meetings. You guys have more meetings than- All open to the public. All open to the public. Um, and I know that was taken out of context during this whole budget thing. Um, the election's over today. I'm sure the work has already started and it's gonna start, you know, uh, you know, the meeting schedule's off a little bit because of the election coverage, but you guys are meeting next week. The school committee's meeting next week. The council's coming back into session. So there's, you know, joint discussions in the works, right? I, yeah, I have, I have full confidence that, uh, uh, you know, Mayor Rodriguez and the City Council and, you know, now um, Mayor-elect uh, Sullivan, the school committee, will things will be just fine with regard to, you know, the school budget uh, in terms of what people have recently read. So things will, things will be just fine. Don't you worry. Okay. Uh, Larry. Um uh, I just think it's been another exciting election year here in the city, obviously at the uh, mayoral and the uh, city council at large in particular. Um, I think the city has shown a positive face of what we're capable of doing when you look at the diversity and the ethnicity that we represent across you know, all uh, ethnicities out there. Uh, we're ready to continue to fight the good fight. Um, I, you know, Mayor Carpenter, I think, set the tone six years ago when he won uh, that election, and he started to unite this city uh, along all ethnic lines, and I think that will continue. I think uh, Mayor Rodriguez has done a tremendous job in his interim role. Uh, people may have felt that there was going to be doom and gloom for six months, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm overly pleased with what I've seen happen you know, under uh, Mayor Rodriguez's, uh, you know, tutelage in the last three or four months here. And I know it will go that way for the end of the year. Um, we've got a capable mayor who understands the challenges of the city going forward in uh, 2020. And uh, it all comes down to his team, too. You know, who, what, what is the team that's going to be put together to make him successful? You know, and we just look for the best. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd, I'd also like to give kudos to... Uh, uh, interim Mayor Rodriguez, because he, you know, t to serve the city, he put himself at, at risk 
as far as his reelection for Councilor Lodge, because being the mayor, he didn't have time to go out and do the kind of campaign, and I'm sure he would have liked to do. And, but he still came out on top. So, uh, you know, you got a good mix now of new people, new blood, and the old guard, and hopefully they'll all be able to work together. I think that, you know, with regard to the councilor at large seat, because there are four councilors at large, the general public, in my opinion, is more apt to take a leap of faith with people. Whereas, you know, with regard to the mayor, and you see in the actual wards, the, the incumbents tend to prevail. Um, but where you have, you know, four counselor, counselors at large, and you have two that clearly have been uh, historically uh, present in the city and successful, um, the public, I think, has more, uh, is more at ease to say, okay, let's, let's give these new people a, a, a look, so to speak. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, again, you know, Brockton, like you said, is a diverse community, and I think in the council at large race, it really um, is showing itself, which is a good thing. You know? Absolutely. So um, I'm of the understanding that newbie is out, either outside or just back inside the building. We're going to have some video from Tina Cardoso, who is the councilor elect uh, to serve uh, starting in January, and also um, uh, some video from Jimmy Pereira. So um, any surprises at all, folks, tonight that you think? For me, I think the margin of victory for the mayor's race was a lot higher than most of us may have anticipated. Okay. I really believe that true. You know. Steve? Generally speaking, most people figure incumbents have, have it locked, uh, and more God, even though not an incumbent as a councilor at large, what has been on the council for the last four years, but uh, didn't prevail. Yeah, and I think that we, we did mention that in the last, you know, in the preliminary election, that we were a bit surprised and that it was a major risk. Um, so that, um, you know, that decision, I give her, you know, kudos for courage to go out and do it. Um, but, um, you know, with respect to the large field and, um, you know, the uh, changes that are taking place in the city, uh, and again, the counselor at large having uh, more, uh, an opportunity for newcomers to come on board. Um, in retrospect, you know, I, I don't know if she'd make the same decision, you know. Well, she certainly did come from uh, being, she was 15th on the ballot in the preliminary, and she made it into the top four. And, you know, Steve, we've talked a lot in the past about ballot position and how that all works. Seems to kind of been thrown out the window in this election, okay? I got uh Stand corrected after the last time. I mean, I, I really still believe it's it's part of it. But uh, there was the look. That's why we have elections. You, you never know how it's going to go. You never know how people feel at the any given point in time, or the mm -hmm. day of the election, or the weather might affect it, or the the mood of the people might affect it, or some last minute thing that somebody said will affect it. You never know, and that's why you have elections. That's why it's fun. That's why we cover them. Absolutely. And as soon as this election is over, guess what happens? The next one starts. That's right. The next one after <laughs> this much. one is going to be the presidential primary in March. Yep. Um, that's when all the city and city committees get elected: Democratic City Committee, Republican City Committee. Um, they're doing early voting for that, which I think I like early voting. I like the whole idea of being able to early vote um, because you can't come up with an excuse for not voting. Not voting. Um, if it's on a weeknight or weekday and people are working nine to five, they got eight hours of coverage, but they're still early and they're still late. And then weather in, in, into, into, you know, interplays into the whole thing. Um, I like the location they did in the past up at Westgate Mall. You could go vote and have a cup of coffee all at the, the same the time. Last, the last time they did it, I, I availed myself of that. I went up there and voted. Cindy, uh, our election commissioner, did a great job of setting it up and and running it, and uh, it was very easy to do. You just walked right in. It took just a couple of seconds to cast your vote, and uh, you could do it anytime you wanted. It was very, very convenient. So we're 10 minutes before the 10 o'clock hour. Um, people don't believe me, but when you are dealing with digital video, 
It's not a matter <coughs> of taking a tape and throwing it in a machine and hitting play. You actually have to edit it. Not much, but you have to render it, and there's all sorts of technical mm -hmm. stuff. So that's what's being done right now as we speak. We're not live. What people don't know about cable access right. television is we don't have a microwave transmitter truck that you can go live, throw up the truck, and be live. We're live here in the studio <coughs> because we're connected to the cable system. So um, it used to be live to tape. There's no more tape anymore. Everything's a digital chip or whatever. So that's what's happening. So we got a couple of choices here, folks. We can either continue to talk, stretch a little bit, or we can take another quick break, put up the music, and come back as soon as we have the video. And uh, I was hoping to make the 10 o'clock hour. I know you guys got a uh, engagement otherwise in, in other places, <laughs> and some of us are gonna go home and sleep. What do you wanna do? Talking heads, that's what we are here. Let's yeah, continue. We're already to talk. here, let's we're talk it out. And besides, okay. I think the other, yeah. you know, we want to hear from Jimmy Pereira's son. Yeah, I, I certainly, you know, would like to hear that. And I mean, you know, if, uh, I think Tina, his supporters would like to hear that. Well, too. we definitely were going to do yeah, that. Right, I just didn't yeah. know how much more time we could kill in between. Okay, so let's talk about not the next election the presidential election because that's national politics and we'll leave it to the networks and the pundits and everything to do that. But next year in 2020 are state rep races, state senate races, um, uh, constitutional races for office for governor and correct, no, 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 that's no, not governor. governor. It's a presidential yeah. election year. Yeah. So we got the state, we got county races. Right now there's a county um, race going on. There's um, an incumbent councilor, uh, incumbent county commissioner, Dan Pallotta, who's running for re-election, Republican. There are at least three Democrats that I know of. Um, Carlos De Silva, vice chair of the Hingham School Committee. Um, Michael Bradley, who's a selectman down in Marshfield. And Jack Reardon, who's trying to come back and enter the political race. Um, we have Jimmy's video ready, so we don't have, have to, to stall or oh. kill any more time. So <laughs> let's go. take a look at what Jimmy Pereira, um, uh, who ran for mayor, had to say. Jimmy, hell of a race, came up short, man. I mean, it can't be a good feeling, man. Just, just talk about what's going on, man. Hey, um, you know, we uh, waited for the results. We got the results. Unfortunately, we didn't get to where we wanted to. But, hey, the Brockton way is not to give up and make sure you put up a good fight. Uh, we had a great, strong, clean campaign. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more work to be done. Uh, voters need to know where to vote. There's a lot of calls that we've uh, received that people didn't know where to vote and uh, information wasn't uh, easily accessible. So, uh, again, a lot of work to be done. And trust me, I'll continue to roll my sleeves and get, uh, get in the uh, grease and uh, apply uh, pressure and do what we can to make sure we uh, bring Brockton together and move forward. I know you're exhausted right now. Yeah, you um, <laughs> what, What's next? Sleep. Obviously, sleep, bed, get some rest. Kids got school tomorrow morning. Um, and just, you know, back to, back to life, uh, you know, uh, gonna go back, of course, to work as, as a planner uh, and continue to work not just for Brockton but for the region uh, and continue to uh, get to the lab and work and work on the uh, plans and reports and see how we could uh, move forward. Jimmy, we're proud of you. Um, you're definitely in a good race. And, uh, you know, we, 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 you, have, you have a bright future. How old are you, brother? 28, yeah, I forget, I forget sometimes. The, yeah, the, the biggest thing you got going for you is time. Yes. yes. See, your time, you're in your prime right now, so, so this is only the beginning. All right, so you're going to do great things. We're proud of you, and, uh, you know, and, and there's many more great things coming for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, just want to tell Jimmy Pereira um, that he ran a very clean and respectable campaign, and he was a true gentleman. He was a pleasure to deal with, to have on Brockton Community Access, and like Newby said, 28 years old is certainly a future at some point for him, not sure what office, but uh, you know, you yep. get off the horse for a couple of days or a couple of months or a year, and then you get back on it if you get the political bug um, for you. We're also gonna hear from uh, Tina Cardoso, who is uh, the counselor at large elect, but any reaction to what you saw with Newby and Jimmy? I, I think Newby's right, I mean, you know, this gentleman is, is young, he ran a good campaign, very energetic, around the community, uh, you know, city planning, uh, regional planning. Uh, there's absolutely no reason why he cannot run for another uh, position. 
uh, or you know even you know later on for the mayor's seat but but I think that if he holds another position has a little bit of um, you know actual real finance under his belt people will feel much more comfortable and um, you know don't be surprised to see him you know perhaps someday in the mayor's seat but I just think that right now uh, you know an incumbent with a lot a lot of experience uh, was the right fit uh, in light of you know, what the city's going through right now budgetarily um, and you know the tragic loss that we had. Steve? Uh, I think Doby is 100% right. He hit the nail right on the head. Uh, Jerry Pereira's got plenty of time to make his mark. Larry? I think Jimmy made one tactical mistake in his campaign and that was after the primary was over embracing Gene Bradley Darren Court in particular. I think Gene Bradley Darren Court was a cancer to this city in his role and responsibility as a candidate trying to run for mayor and I think that Jimmy's embracing of Jimmy after the loss hurt his campaign. Uh, Jimmy embracing De Gene it hurt his campaign in the end. Pretty strong words Larry. Just calling it as I see it and right. from what I see out strong. there and the feedback. Okay yeah. we now have Tina Tina Cardoso video, and let's take a look at that. Tina Cardoso is Councilor Elect for the City of Brockton. Here with the City Council at Large Elect, Tina Cardoso. Tina, listen, this is a beautiful thing. How are you feeling right now? Nubi, I can't even believe it yet. It's, it's hard to believe. I am so humbled. I'm so blessed. Thank you to all the voters. Thank you to you. Thank you to so many people. I have so many thank yous. Um, Ooh. It's bittersweet because Jimmy, you know, I was his, a supporter of Jimmy. Um, Talk about your story and where you came from to, to this now. I mean, it's, that's got to be a blessing. You said your story is my, your story is my story, right? Now your slogan. So my kids today, they're like, Mom, from a 16-year-old high school dropout, mother, single mom, to now city council at large in Brompton. That's huge, newbie. I thank the voters. I thank God. I thank my family. I'm just so emotional right now. I don't even know what to say. It's I'm going to tell you this. Go inside and party. Have a good time. Thank God you deserve it. Good things happen to good people. Congratulations. Thank you, Nubi, and thank you to you and everyone in the media, Brockton Community Access, Mark Lindy, all the Cape Verdean radio programs, all of the television programs and local cable access, everyone. You guys were instrumental in this and passing on information. I appreciate you. I thank you. And God bless everyone in the city, everyone that voted for me. This is a good day. It's just the beginning. I'm here for you. Tina Cardoza, I'm yours. I want to represent Brockton, all of Brockton, not just the, the small minority, all of us. Okay. And I'm so grateful today and blessed. Thank you. And we're going to take a look in, in, in a moment at one more video. Um, he wasn't opposed. He got elected in Ward 4. Um, he did have the support of Brett Gormley, the outgoing school committee member in Ward 4, and uh, Tony Rodriguez. Um, I met him on the campaign trail. He went to a lot of community events out there. And uh, I personally think he's going to be an asset to the city of Brockton. So if we have that video, I will we'll take a look at that now with Tony Rodriguez. School committee, Tony. Uh, first and foremost, congratulations. Uh, how you feeling right now? Feel great. Feel great. Feel great. Uh, just talk about, you know, listen. You know, you you, you ran. You took uh, Brett Gormley's place. Talk about some things you want, kind of want to accomplish uh, going to your first term. Uh, there's a lot of things we're going to look at. Um, number one, we're looking at the high school, uh, trying to remodel that and making sure we get the funds for that. Um, the biggest thing is making sure that you know we get our state funding. Uh, as you know, it's been an article, you know, we've been underfunded and uh, the state just passed a nice bill for us and uh, hopefully that money does come to fruition for the city and then we can actually hire more teachers and uh, decrease our class sizes for our students. Thoughts on the mayor's race, Bob Sullivan, uh, victorious. Uh, thoughts on that? Um, congratulations to him. Uh, that was a tough battle, you know, Jimmy's second time around. Um, I was a Jimmy supporter. Uh, 
Uh, I look forward to working with Bob as he's going to be the uh, chairman of the school committee. Uh, he's been around 14 years and uh, he's going to bring some experience. Uh, he ran on that and uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to do a very good job and, uh, and I hope the residents of the city actually challenges him and uh, move the city forward, you know, uh, continue what, you know, what former Mayor Bill Carpenter was doing and revitalizing our downtown and our districts and hopefully he can help us lower our taxes as well. All right, wait, congratulations and, uh, and good luck. And we're back here live at BCA Studios. First of all, I want to thank co-hosts, Steve Foote, Larry Curtis, Tom Minicello, the whole crew, Phil, Emma, Mike, Paul, my wife Terry who answered the door on the phone, and Lynn Smith over at City Hall, and I'm hoping I didn't forget anybody out there. I hate doing that. It should just be in the credits. Um, gentlemen, thank you. I'm going to release you to go out and enjoy some, uh, as someone would say, liquid libation and maybe some food to go along with that. And uh, tomorrow is a new day, and uh, we'll have on the first Monday in January a inauguration ceremony. So thank you all. Appreciate thank it you. very much, and thank you to the crew. Uh, continue to watch BCA. Cover, we cover all your government meetings, school committee, finance committee, and city council. Thanks for joining us, and uh, good night.